All right, let's get started. Uh, so it looks like almost everyone in the room right now is an incoming student, which is super exciting to see. Um, today is obviously all about academic advising, so we definitely need our experts here. So we have a good troop of people from the college academic advising office. Um, I sadly am not part of that office, but I do work in college programming and orientation, which is also housed along with academic advising under the Dean of Students office. Um, my name is Katie Welch. I should have started with that. Um, but I am here mainly to moderate the session today and to introduce our wonderful academic advisors who will be here presenting for you all. Um, so first we have Tamar Daskin and we have Hope Sanders who will be leading our presentation today. Uh, we also have Alex LeBlanc, Janine Myers, and Debbie Coyle. They will be in our chat, so please feel free to use the chat um, to ask them any questions, to give any comments, to give any feedback, anything like that. They will be there keeping an eye on everything. Uh, we also have a Q&A section at the bottom of your screen um, that you can utilize. This is what we will use for our Q&A session after the presentation. There is a place where you can upvote different questions. You don't need to write the same question. If you see it already, you can just upvote that question. I will give you time before the Q&A to do that, um, but we will basically work through the questions at the highest upvoted question to as many as we can get through in the time that we have. Um, so I'll give you time to look through and vote the ones that you definitely want our presenters to answer. Uh, so with that, I am going to bring up their presentation and turn it over to our wonderful panelists. So uh, Tamar and Hope, if you wanna take it away, I will give you control. Thanks, Katie. Um, hi, my name is Tamar Daskett. Like Katie said, I'm one of the advisors in the college. Uh, my accomplice today is Hope Sanders, also one of the advisors in the college. We're really excited to get to know you and meet you over the course of the summer and the next four years. Um, we hope that this presentation is helpful in answering some basic questions, getting you rolling on some stuff you need to know this summer. This is not uh, the only information you'll be getting this summer. So if you have questions at the end, that's okay. We'll get to them over the course of the summer. Um, but hopefully we can get you rolling and get you started in the right direction. So hope we'll take it away from here. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> and like Tamar said, we're really, really happy to meet you. We're excited to meet you. We can't wait uh, to meet you in person at some point. Um, but really quickly, we're just going to start off with kind of the general overview of the advising office. So as you might know, you know, as academic advisors, we do know quite a bit about your journey, but we don't know everything. Um, so that's why we have all of these other offices that you can see here on your screen. So these are all places that we can direct you to get different guidance. Um, for example, going to the registrar, the bursar, these aren't exactly in our office specifically, but there are other places on campus that you can go to for help. And we're here to kind of help direct you to these different offices um, wherever need be. Um, you'll see us right here in the Dean of Students office. We share that office um, with the other um, centers that are listed below us in academic advising. Um, so we're also happy to direct you to those offices and centers as well to accommodate whatever you need. So you might be wondering what academic advising is. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Um, and so let's start by talking a little bit about what academic advising is. Go back to the slide. Okay. Um, so what we do is we are an overarching general guide for you at your time for your time at U Chicago. Uh, we will help advise you about your path through the college what you might want that path to be. We're there to, we're here to provide you support uh, in determining what you do want to do and maybe what you don't want to do. College is a learning experience from top to bottom. So we know that over the course of time, a lot of people change their minds or learn new things, get new information and make new decisions based on things they've learned. So we're help, here to help you talk through all of that. 
We're here to support you in your journey, advocate for you when situations come up, mediate some issues sometimes, things can happen. We're here to guide you through anything you need in the college. We don't have all the answers on campus, but we can often help you find resources on campus that are relevant for what you need. Um, we're also here as a resource. If something challenges your success or you're having issues of any variety, we're a good place to start. Again, we can't always solve your problem, but we're often the first place people stop when they need advice. Um, we're there for you. If you just need somebody to lis listen to you about something that's going on, we're happy to do that too. We're also here to help you think about why, why you're in college, why you wanna do the major you're thinking of doing, why you don't wanna do the major you're thinking, anything like that, we're here to help you think about the grander scheme of why you wanna do what you wanna do. Okay, so on the other hand, a few things that our job is not. So we're not here to tell you exactly what to take, um, we are, though, however, telling you what to take if it's, you know, extremely vital to your major. For example, if there's a specific sequence that you need to take at a specific time, we can tell you that. Um, but as far as choosing your major or choosing your classes, that's ultimately up to you. We're just here to guide you through the process. Okay. Um, we also don't really give specifics as far as which class is better, um, which professor is better, things like that. Um, and we don't, you know, kind of tell you if there's like a class we think is, you know, better, things like that. Um, that's ultimately for you to find out. <laughs> um, also, more, more importantly, we're not here to judge you. So whatever the choices are that you make in regards to your major or your classes or things like that, we're just here to help. So we're here to answer any questions and get you registered and kind of get you on your way. But you're the one that's kind of taking more ownership of your academic journey. Uh, another note, um, our job is not to talk to your parents. Um, if your parents do, you know, approach us and want to talk, we'll let you know that. Um, just to kind of loop you as a student in on that situation too. Um, if you'd like for us to talk to your parents, um, we can do that. Um, but it'd be best too if, you know, if you and your parents were maybe looped in at the same time, we could talk to you together. Um, doesn't happen often, but just in case that comes up, we like to point it out. All right, moving along. Um, so while we as advisors do a lot to help you out, um, this is a two-way street. We have a lot, there's a lot that you need to do as well. Um, so this is a combo pack of you doing stuff and us doing stuff, and together we get you to graduation. Starting with, one of your responsibilities is to read your email. If it comes from me, if it comes from the college, me being your advisor, sorry, any of the advisors. Um, if it comes from the College Academic Advising Office, if it comes from Dean Jay Ellison, the Dean of Students, you wanna read all those emails. They all have important information in them and not reading your email isn't really an excuse for saying you didn't know you needed to do something. That is the primary way college advising communicates with you. Um, besides for in-person appointments, so it's really important you learn to read your emails thoroughly. Um, another side note, when you're emailing us or professors or anyone on campus, learn to email like a pro. So it makes you look awesome when you do things like use salutations, for example, dear Dr. So-and-so or hello, professor such-and-such. -such. Um, you wanna use full sentences, state your question clearly and concisely and use signatures. So don't rely on, um, Use your name as a signature to your email. Don't just have a one-off sentence and then get out. Say who sent the email. All of that stuff makes you look really awesome and professional. All right, another important note as far as your advising appointments. It's really important to be on time. Um, that's, you know, to any type of appointment, but especially your advising appointment because we have a lot of students that we're trying to accommodate um, in a very short amount of time. Um, so if you are running late, it could be hard to accommodate you because we may have another appointment right after yours. Um, so that's why it's important to make sure you're on time. But besides that, we know that emergencies happen or um, you get lost or, you know, you, something comes up happens to us too. 
Um, so in that event, just let your advisor know, um, maybe via the wonderful email format that Tamara was talking about, you could use that. Um, but yes, make sure you at least let them know and then your advisor will be happy to reschedule the appointment with you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we got it. Okay. I think we're in the right place. Um, okay. So, uh, some notes about things you're probably very curious about. How do I find out what I need to do? Obviously, uh, your advisor is there to help, but there are a lot of resources you can access on your own to help you learn about what you need to do in college. Um, if you're like me and you love reading course descriptions, the college course that catalog is there for you. The college course catalog lists a ton of information, like what you need to do in order to graduate, what the requirements are for each major for graduation. It lists uh, each course offered uh, and lists the term it's offered and if known when it, the course catalog is published, who's teaching the course. Um, so there's a lot of really amazing information in the course catalog. I suggest you get to know it and use it and love it. Um, there is information in there aside from just what courses are offered and what majors are offered. It also lists everything you need to do for the core curriculum, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, it also lists all the minors we offered. We do not offer a minor in every single major department. Um, it lists other information like what sort of credit you can get for AP, IV, or other uh, exam scores. It lists some transfer credit information. Some people have classes or, or questions already about booth classes or other classes in our professional schools, and there's a little bit of information about that in there. Um, that's more for down the line, just a note about where to begin to look for that sort of information. Another great resource we have is called My Planner. My Planner is a tool that you can use to track um, your progress through the college. So what you've done already in terms of core, once you start taking classes and once you declare a major, what, you, what requirements for that major you've done and still need to do. It all has, also has a wonderful feature where you can plan out a schedule for your four years. So if you're a big planner and you love being able to plan out what you're gonna do in what quarter, my planner is the place to go for that. And then of course, your advisor is there. The college curriculum is complicated and we know that and we are there to help. All right, so narrowing down a little bit more on the specifics of the summer and what you can kind of do to prepare in the near future. Um, you're already doing something to prepare right now. So congratulations. Um, you're attending the webinar, but there's also uh, several more webinars to come. Um, so again, like Tamara said, it's really important to check your email so you know um, when and where those webinars will take place. Um, that includes also reading the emails from CPO. That'll have information too about the webinars and other resources that you can utilize before you actually come to campus. Another step that you'll need to take um, is having the initial individual advising appointment with your advisor. Um, you'll be doing this uh, between June 22nd, that's the first day, um, and then you have till August 7th to complete that advising appointment, okay? Um, you have to do that in order to uh, participate in the registration process in August. Um, so definitely make time to do that between those dates, it's very important. Um, and then there will also be a pre-meeting questionnaire that you can fill out before your appointment just to give us a little bit more information about the things that you need and how best we can help you um, for your appointment. Another thing that we'll be talking about um, besides the pre-registration and just initial questions uh, is going to be class choices. Okay, this is happening later in the summer um, and you'll be receiving other details about that soon. So again, check your email to find out more. <laughs> Very important. Um, and then another thing we'd like to note um, is about placement exams. I know some of you may already have questions about this, um, but just a few quick notes about the exams. 
Um, everyone will be taking the math exam that's required um, for all students. So you will be taking math. Um, as far as language, um, that has a few different options. Um, you can take the language exam um, for a language that you think you have prior knowledge or prior experience or prior education with, um, just for us to get an idea of where you might place as far as language courses. Um, so that's how you do that. Again, we'll be giving you more information about how to do that and when to do that. Um, but it's a good idea to go ahead and start thinking about that and preparing for the placement. Um, another note, um, you can take the chemistry exam um, if you think that you could potentially maybe use chemistry um, in, your, in your degree plan. If you're not sure, um, you can always ask us too. We can help you decide if you would need to take chemistry or not. Um, but those are just a few notes for that. Um, one more other thing I wanted to note about the language is that if you plan to start fresh and you're going to take a language with UChicago from beginning to end, um, then there's no real need to take the placement exam. Um, you can just start on, if you want to start at the beginning, you absolutely can do that too. Um, but again, if you have questions that are more pertaining to your individual circumstance, we can definitely talk about that as well. Okay. Okay, so I know a lot of people have questions about classes, like what classes do I take? Ah! Uh, so a brief breakdown. A full load at UChicago is three or four classes, which means that some quarters people take three and some quarters people take four. Either is a full-time load and you're welcome to do either. However, to have enough credits to graduate, you need to do a minimum of six quarters of four classes, which leaves you six quarters of doing three classes. Generally, for most classes, uh, most load, course loads, three classes is a lighter course load. However, there are certain courses that do require a lot of time, and maybe doing three in that quarter might be about the same amount of work as four. Depends on what courses you're taking. But anyway, you have 12 quarters at UChicago. The short version is you need to do at least six quarters of four classes and six quarters of three classes. But what should you do? There's a lot of factors to consider when you're thinking about whether you want to do three or four classes in your first quarter. So if you're the sort of person who wants to try out every co-curricular and extracurricular activity that you might possibly be interested in, you might want to plan on doing three classes to allow you the time for that. Um, will you have a job? A lot of people have work study awards or other, get other jobs on campus, uh, and you want to make sure you leave time for that while still being able to do your classes. It depends also largely how you are at time management. So if you're the sort of person who's way more functional and gets a lot more done when you're super busy, maybe you wanna do four classes. If you're the sort of person who really needs to think about everything you're doing, do all the reading very thoroughly, which I suggest doing, especially in your first quarter. Um, and if you're worried potentially about the amount of reading you have in your first quarter and you're just unsure, maybe do three. These are not the only considerations you might want to think about when you're thinking three or four classes in your first quarter. Um, but if you want to take some time to ease into college and feel it out, maybe three classes is the right for you. Another thing to think about is what the requirements and prerequisites for your major might be. So if you want to do, for example, a comparative literature degree, that requires a lot of language study and you probably want to think about taking a language in your first quarter. That's just one example of a lot of different things you might want to think about. And just remember, this is your plan. This is your time at UChicago. This is your college experience. So do what seems right for you. Yes, you do you, absolutely. All right, so a little bit more about your schedule in the fall um, and what that's going to look like. Again, you'll be making your individual schedule, but in general, everybody will take a humanities or Hume sequence in the fall and the winter. Um, you're going to have several options to choose from as far as Hume, um, and that way when you're doing the pre-registration process, um, you can list out those possibilities um, and kind of we'll go from there as far as which one you'll be placed into, okay? Um, you'll stay with the same sequence for the both quarters, so for fall and for winter, you'll be studying the same sequence. Um, and you could have an option of taking the third part of that sequence, um, if you so choose, depending on your individual 
schedule, which we'll, we'll get to that too. Okay, most people also do take math. So you'll have Hume sequence, math. Um, other than that, we'll help you kind of fill in the gaps as far as what other classes you'll be taking um, for those first couple of quarters, right? Um, so like we said, you'll talk to us and we'll kind of hear about, again, your goals and your interests, um, a possible degree path or a plan. Um, and that way we can individualize it to your specific needs. Um, but again, please bring all those ideas and thoughts you have to your appointment with us um, so we can you know, make the most of the time together. Um, and then also using the registration planner, um, the catalog that we talked about too are also really, really helpful as far as learning more about which classes might be best for you or which ones you're just interested in in general. Okay. And then we will also move forward to talk about a little bit more of what's required with your degree program in general. Um, it's based up of so 42 units, uh, 4,200 units and 42 credits to be exact um, overall. But as you can see, um, 15 were gonna come from your general education or the core. Um, which we will dissect very soon as well. Um, then your other requirements, those will be made up of requirements for your major and also general electives, okay? So as you can see, um, for the major, you're going to have 10 to 19 classes for that. And then those electives or general electives, those will be the eight to 18. So again, that's a lot of variety. So that's why we're talking with you about which degree path you plan to pursue for yourself. Um, and then all the way at the bottom, you'll see that there is that language competency, um, which you can fulfill in a few different ways. So we'll also be talking about that too. So no worries. Um, but yes, and then we're going to go ahead and move on so that Tamar can kind of dissect the core even further. Okay, so the core at UChicago. Hopefully everyone is aware that they've signed up for a curriculum in which there is a core, uh, but there's a lot of variety within the core. For certain majors, there are some things you have to do, and for certain majors, it's entirely your choice. And we'll break that down a little bit right now, but we'll also talk about that one-on-one. -on -one. So the core, an overview. This little box shows you every element of the core. It's a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna break it down even further. The first section of the core, is the art, humanities, and civ section. Civ is civilization studies, which is akin to history. Um, there are, are six courses required for this section of the core. Everybody takes two Hume. Everybody takes two Hume, one in autumn and one in winter. You have the option for a third class of Hume. If you like your, your Hume, you're, allowed, you're more than welcome to keep it for spring. Everybody does two civ. Doesn't matter when, we encourage people to do the core in the first two years of study, um, but it is entirely up to you when CIV fits into your plan. Some people choose to study abroad for their CIV requirement. That is something that will be talked about more later towards autumn quarter, and if you're interested in that, definitely mention it to your advisor. But anyway, everyone does at least two Hume, everybody does at least two CIV. Everybody does at least one art class. So if you're keeping track at home, that's five. The sixth class, is whichever is most interesting to you in that area. So it can be your third Hume, third Civ, or if you really like art, do two Hume, two Civ, and two Art. The next section of the core that I like to talk about is SOCH. This is a year-long sequence. It always starts in autumn unless you choose to do it over the summer. Most people choose to do it during the year. Uh, we have several SOCH sequences. We'll be talking about that more throughout the summer so you have a little bit more of an idea of what SOCH you might wanna do. Most people take SOCH either first or second year. People who are interested in social sciences and some humanities majors will often do it first year. But again, everybody does SOCH, it is a full year and it always starts in autumn. The last section of the core is the math, Phi Psi and bio. Phi Psi stands for physical sciences for anyone who was like, what does that mean? Um, and here's how that one breaks down. It is also six classes. Everybody does two phi sci. Everybody does two bio. Everybody does one math. However, if you take calculus, 
you have to do two classes of calculus for it to count in core. If you're going to be, for an example, an English major and calculus is not required and you never want to take calculus again, you're allowed to do something else for your math and there are several options. Um, but if you do that and you do one math, you have to do either a third, bi sci or bio. So keep that in mind when you're planning out your curriculum. For people who are going into STEM majors, um, usually there is a requirement for either bi sci or bio. For example, if you're gonna major in chemistry, your physical sciences will be general chemistry. Um, and your advisor can go over a little bit more thoroughly what those requirements may be based on your interests. Okay, more about classes. I know there's a lot to go over here. So uh, a lot of people have been asking about placement tests. The deadline is not until July, I believe. So if you haven't done them yet, you haven't missed them. Um, everybody needs to take the math placement, which we already said, if you've done a language, please take that exam too. Um, the results will be available, we hope, in early August. That is the plan. If that changes, we will let you know. Um, and you'll, it'll be available in your MyU Chicago portal. Um, let's see. Like we said, all core sequences in Hume and SOCH begin in autumn quarter. So keep that in mind when you're planning. Um, and then again, see the catalog for quarter, start quarters for any sequences other than Hume and SOCH. Things like physics, general chemistry, those start in autumn, but there are some more flexible sequences depending on what your goals are. Um, there are certain math classes for which there are tutorials required. So keep that in mind when you're planning out a schedule. The schedule is not published yet, so you, you can't thoroughly look into this yet. Um, but once it is, it will be listed in the class search uh, function of what lectures and tutorials are required. And just remember, the core is designed to be foundational. So when you're planning out your curriculum and your goals, try to account for most of the core in your first two years. Oh, sorry, I see a tutorial. What is a tutorial? It's basically a discussion section. Really quick answer to that. Thank you, Tamara, <laughs> for helping build those. OK, so a little bit more moving on. Um, about the placement test results. Um, you'll be getting these uh, early August, and you'll do that by accessing your my.uchicago.edu account. Um, through there, you'll be able to see the results. Um, if you do have trouble um, finding those or locating those after uh, early August, you can definitely let us know, and we can help you locate them. Um, a couple of notes uh, beyond that. Um, whatever your placement is, we do recommend that you go ahead and try um, to take the course that you are placed into um, before you try to switch it. Um, because it's always best to give it a try. Um, you may find out that um, you would like to stick in that class and that that's the one for you. Um, but if not, of course, we're going to help you through that. Um, but definitely just give it a try. Um, if you hope to take a higher level math exam, um, we'll notify you again via email to check that check those um, to tell you if you qualify for for that. Okay, and circling back to the language competency, I know we still have a few questions about that as well. Um, there's a few options for that. Um, the first would be completing the sequence. So, and again, you can start from scratch um, or depending on your placement, starting from there. Um, so for instance, an example, you could just go ahead and take Spanish 101, 102, 103. That would satisfy the requirement. Another way to do it is through the language competency exam. Um, small note that this happens in winter. Um, and you do need um, to have sufficient placement in order to qualify for the competency, competency exam, which you would get via email. Okay, another way to do this is through an AP score. Um, so you would have to have a five on the language that are listed, listed right here. So Chinese, Spanish, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Latin. Um, as far as the IB scores, um, that is a possibility for, to fulfill the requirement as well. Um, and it could be either the standard level or the higher level. Um, so both of those would count. Um, that would fulfill the requirement as well. 
Okay, and lastly, another option would be if you have past schooling in another country. So for example, if you are from China, you grew up in China and the classes were given in your native language, that could count too as far as completing the language competency, but you would have to go through the petition process um, to count that. Um, and we would be happy to go through how to petition for that um, with you. That's something your advisor can certainly help with as well. So as you can see, there's a lot of choices as far as completing the language competency. Um, but again, if you have a unique situation or a unique question, um, your advisors are gonna be there to help walk you through that, okay? Uh, sorry, that was my fault, you guys. Thank you. Let's talk about some next steps. This is the end of the formal presentation. And like Katie said earlier, we're going to do some questions right after this. Um, but just the last reminder to read all your emails. Um, schedule and show up to your one-on-one -on -one appointment with your advisor. I think there is some question out there about uh, who your advisor is and how you schedule with them. Um, advisors has not been assigned yet. We hope you get that done by tomorrow or Monday at the latest. Uh, once you're assigned an advisor, there's a link we will give you. You can log in and you just book an appointment with your advisor. Uh, their schedule shows up on a website called College Scheduling. Um, take the placement exams and submit your AP or IB scores. Our AP and IB score submission instructions are on the New Student Advising website. Um, the, I believe the deadline for taking placement exams is July 17th, so keep that in mind. And a small, small note about placement exams, I don't recommend cramming for these exams. It is meant to be demonstrative of your actual knowledge in the subject. So if you cram really hard and take the exam and get placement higher than what you actually know, uh, it's gonna be confusing and you're gonna have to go through extra steps to get that changed later. So you want your placement to reflect your actual knowledge. Um, Attend other area-specific webinars and videos. There's a lot of videos on the college's YouTube channel, so check those out. Um, and we will be hosting other webinars that are a little bit TBD, so keep an eye out. And guys, remember to relax. It's your last summer before college. You're gonna be working hard. Uh, take a moment to chill and enjoy being at home. Uh, you're gonna be busy once you get to college. And thank you, thank you so much for attending. Yeah, thank you guys so much. We can't wait to meet you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tamar and Hope. We really appreciate you answering, uh, providing all that information. Um, I am going to look at the Q&A, but if everyone who is on this call wants to take a second to go in, look at the questions, upvote the ones that haven't been answered, that you're still interested in hearing the answer to, that would be great. Um, I'll give you just one minute to do that. Yes, there are a couple that already have quite a few votes, so I'll just toss those out to you. Um, is taking a Hume and Soch sequence at the same time too big of a workload slash too much reading? Uh, I guess I'll take this one. Um, that is a great question and there's no <laughs> one answer to it. Uh, some people who enjoy reading and writing, that's their preferred method of learning and classes, find it very doable. They enjoy that. Um, and I think it's important to remember that we're all here to learn and learning should be enjoyable. So it's not like professors are trying to beat you down with classes. Uh, it's meant to expand your knowledge. A lot of people find taking human social very doable. However, if you feel like writing is not your strong suit, it needs a lot of work, maybe you wanna just do Hume and take social second year. Totally a valid option. I would say probably about 35 to 45% of the first years take SOCH. I, that's not an exact number. That's just a feeling I have. I haven't run the numbers on it. Um, but it's certainly doable and you will do it every year. Thank you. Uh, there are a couple questions about this one. Uh, the first is when will we be able to access my planner and where they can find the planner? Sure. And that, that's available on the my.uchicago.edu. Um, you will be getting access um, to that in the very near future. So once you do, you'll be able to see it um, 
I believe on the home screen, once you get on there, there is an option to go to the My Planner. Um, also, um, I've had some students just ask if, you know, I could share the screen and show them how to get to that as well. So if you do have trouble, we can also help you with that. Um, but yeah, if, if anyone has other specific dates about when My Planner will be accessible, jump in. Awesome. Thank you, Hope. Um, all right, so this one is a little more specific. So it says, for the math placement and AP Calculus BC exams, the policy in the past has been that the higher of the two scores is considered for placement. Is this still true this year with the changes to AP courses and exams? And I don't know if you two have info on that. Uh, I actually don't know if we've heard from math specifically about that yet. I will say that an AP score does not confer placement, so you do still need to take the placement exam. Uh, and usually the placement exam is more specific and more um, tailored to what is taught in UChicago math courses, which doesn't specifically adhere to what's taught or uh, tested on the AP. So I typically, the um, math placement exam will supersede AP scores, unless for some reason there was a huge discrepancy, in which case, your advisor will direct you to the math department to discuss it. Great. Uh, so this is about study abroad. Uh, how does study abroad affect your course load? And does study abroad always count for three classes or could it count as a four class quarter? I think that would largely depend on the program that you choose um, and then when you choose to take your study abroad. Um, from what I've heard, a lot of students, um, at least my students have, chosen to take it in the third year, um, use it as their CIV requirement. That's a pretty popular option, but um, there are so, so many choices. If you visit the study abroad site, you can find out actually a list of all the programs and the requirements for those programs, um, the length, and then what you, know, you would receive as far as credits um, for whatever type of program that you choose. So a big recommendation for that would just be going to um, the U Chicago Study Abroad um, webpage. Um, or, and they also have, if you go to the webpage, their email address if you want to kind of shoot them an email about a specific program and finding about more of how that would impact your schedule overall. Great. Uh, how easy is it to add or drop classes, and what is that process like? Oh, good question. So there's a lot of work to be done before we get to the stage where, you're, where you will be add dropping classes yourself. Um, everything, we, we will be deciding a little bit more and more info will be forthcoming about how you get registered for classes to begin with. But if the question is, how do you add drop? Um, add drop will begin for you in autumn quarter, the first day of classes. So you can't add drop yourself before that. That will be slightly different in future quarters. But for the moment, um, add drop, you, you are in charge of your academic life. So add dropping is relatively easy. If there's space in a class, you can add a class. If you're in three, if you're in four classes and you want to swap one class for another, there's a different, there's a swap button. Everything happens through My U Chicago. So that is our official registration system. Um, Canvas registrations, if people are familiar with Canvas, it's our learning management system, all info for classes and like syllabi, discussions, um, submissions for assignments, that all happens through Canvas. But keep in mind that a registration in Canvas is not an official registration that is only through My U Chicago. If you have questions about that, ask your advisor later. It's a little bit in the weeds. Um, the one thing I will say is that you should not drop your Hume. You need instructor consent to get into a new Hume in all cases. Um, Hume is strictly capped, so we can have robust discussion sections. So we will never have more than the allotted number of people in a Hume class. Um, so you will always need instructor consent to get into a new Hume class, which is why you should never drop your Hume unless you have an invite to a new Hume section. I think this was already answered, but just in case people missed it or came in late or anything like that, when will everyone be assigned their academic advisor and how will they be informed? Yes. I believe that that information is coming very quickly. I believe at the, maybe the end of this week. 
um, or if not, early next week. But um, yes, you'll be notified of that through your email again. Um, but also, if you have trouble finding that out, or if you are confused or have any questions, um, you can always reach out to College Advising as well, um, and we'll be able to get you that information too. Uh, let's see. So we have a question. Uh, do you recommend we complete the registration banner from the new student advising website meeting with our academic advisor or in preparation for our first meeting? Yes, that's a great question. The registration planner available on the new student advising website is a great tool. It doesn't send your advisor any information. So you're more than welcome to take it several times if you want to game out several scenarios. Um, once you achieve some idea of what you want, we recommend writing those uh, classes down or taking a screenshot. And it is super helpful to do that before you meet with your advisor. It is not strictly speaking required, but if you want to have a sense of what some of your options are or have questions about specific things the planner told you, definitely do it before meeting with your advisor. Um, we will also have a sort of questionnaire that you can fill out before meeting with your advisor, which is also not strictly required, but strongly recommended, um, which Hope mentioned earlier. That is even more useful for your advisor because it asks some more broad questions besides like, just what do you want to take? Um, so both of those things in combination is really helpful for your advisor for your first conversation, but neither are, I would say, strictly mandatory. Great. Uh, this is a very nice question. I think people are really eager to see all of you. Uh, they ask, can you have more than an appointment with your advisor? Yes. Did you say, can you have one, more than one? Yes. Well, if that was the question. Yes. yes. That yes. was the question. More than one, yes. Okay, good. Yes, you can definitely have more than one. Um, yeah, anytime that you need a question, don't feel like you have to get it all answered in one appointment, um, especially this quarter. It's been really confusing and a lot of people weren't able to get everything that they want to talk about in just one session because they go by fast, um, especially if you're meeting someone for the first time. So that's completely understandable and you can always book, um, you know, as many appointments as you need to um, through the link. We'll give you a link to the advising appointments um, and then some students just prefer to ask questions via email if they've already had an appointment for the quarter. So if you know you just want to send us like just a short list of questions that you might have that we can just answer for you bullet points via email, that's okay too. So we're very accommodating. You touched on this a little bit, but this is something that I saw in the registration questions. Um, just kind of what is like the overall timeline of when you meet with your advisor, how often it's it required? Um, kind of how does that relationship change as you move through the first year, second year? Great question. Um, so you're required to, like we've mentioned, meet with your advisor once during the summer. Um, if you choose to meet with your advisor more than once, great. That's totally fine. Um, we will have appointments open for summer advising from this coming Monday, June 22nd to August 7th. Um, and as more info about registration for autumn is forthcoming, that may change around a little bit, we'll see. Um, in terms of what advising looks like during your first year, that's a great question. You're required to meet with your advisor for your first year once per quarter. Again, you're more than welcome to meet with your advisor more than that if you have things to discuss, thoughts to sort out. There's a lot of reasons to meet with your advisor more than once. Um, we just ask that if you book multiple appointments, you're keeping them um, because we do prepare for every appointment that we have. Um, and there is a way a little bit down the line, but if you do need to cancel an appointment, there's a way to do that online as well. Um, but you'll meet with your advisor once per quarter. And that is enforced by not letting you add drops for the next quarter if you haven't met with your advisor. Once you get into second year, it's a little bit more your choice when you want to meet with your advisor. Again, you could choose to meet with your advisor every quarter. You could choose to meet with your advisor once a year, um, but it's not mandated in the same way. But do plan on meeting with your advisor for one half hour advising appointment at least once per quarter. Awesome, thanks. Uh, so a question about double majoring. If we're planning on double majoring, how should we go about planning which classes to take, especially if we're not exactly sure what one of our majors would be? 
Sure, that's a great question as well. Um, a lot of double majors here, uh, so it's pretty common. Um, but the first place to start, I think it's really, really helpful to look at the catalog, the Chicago catalog, as far as to, uh, getting an idea of what's required for a certain major. Um, so on that catalog, you'll be able to see the exact number of requirements, which classes are required. Um, and from there, you can kind of make a plan about how to go about that. Definitely talk to your advisor as far as, you know, making an individualized plan for you based on which two majors you choose. So that way we can help you kind of make sure that you meet all the requirements um, in your allotted time here at UChicago. Um, another really helpful tool for planning that out is My Planner. Um, so again, once you get access and you go to the my.uchicago.edu, you'll have access to My Planner. Um, we also have access to My Planner too. So we can help you utilize that tool. Um, but what you can do is actually add in um, like a couple of majors that you're thinking about and it will automatically generate um, what's required for those. Um, it'll also tell you, you know, once you progress a little further, um, which classes you've already taken to satisfy um, some of those requirements and which ones you still have left. Um, you can also change it. So if you initially decide on two majors, but then you want to get rid of one and add another, or maybe you want to change it to a minor, that's a possibility too. Um, but definitely going back to the catalog is really helpful, utilizing my planner and then also discussing those plans and the requirements with your advisor um, are all good ways to go about planning your double major. Awesome. Uh, so we have one here about AP scores. Um, for submitting AP scores, it says the deadline, I'm assuming this is for you, Chicago, is mid-July. However, the free college board report says it might not arrive until the end of July. Would we have to pay for it to be sent on time? That's an interesting question because I don't personally see the back end of what the AP score submission looks like. Uh, I believe as long as you request the AP score to be sent by the deadline, it should show up for us. And um, do keep in mind that we sort of, it, it's called a load, we load all the AP scores at once and they don't, they show up at the same time for advisors as the placement test results. So we don't know for sure, like the advisors don't have the ability to check if your AP scores arrived until early August. So there is a little bit of a gap between when AP score submissions are due and when advisors can tell you if we actually have them. Um, if you're worried about it, contact your advisor. They can do some digging and find out. It's just um, we don't have immediate access to it until early August, usually. So keep in mind, don't panic, relax. We will get them there eventually. Um, we know it's a little bit complicated, but as long as you request them to be sent by the deadline, I believe they should show up. Awesome. Thanks, Tamar. Uh, so a question about the math placement exam. Um, they're just looking for some recommendations on the review process for the math placement exam. Um, would you recommend a quick review of the most recent topics we've learned or does the placement exam cover every high school math class? I would say, great question. Um, I would say for that test, it's really not expected that you are kind of going back through every math class that you've taken, um, studying, um, kind of looking over that. That's a lot of work. And really the math placement is to see how you're placed now. Um, so I wouldn't spend a lot of time going back through all of your past experiences and past classes studying for it. So you don't have to do that. Um, if, you'd, if you'd like to, you can you know, definitely review just generally um, Kind of brushing up of what you learned most recently, I would say, is better than going back and reviewing everything, at least. If you're going to choose one, I would do that. Um, but again, I don't feel like you need to spend so much time studying for the place. And I think Tamar mentioned, you know, earlier too, it's, you know, if you're cramming and going back and trying to almost relearn a lot of things, and that's really not indicative of what you truly know in regards to the math. Um, and we want the placement to be as accurate as possible um, of the knowledge that you have and coming in. Thanks, Hope. 
another AP question. Um, will you Chicago be honoring the 2020 AP exam results? For example, getting a five on language AP test would allow the language competency to be fulfilled. Uh, yes, so the, the AP scores that are listed in the college catalog under examination credit is what we will be granting credit for this year. So those are accurate. Um, we, as far as I know, I have not heard differently that uh, we will be honoring AP scores from spring 2020. I haven't heard any differently. I can't imagine that it would be any different. I know there were some irregularities with AP tests this year. Um, and if anything changes with regard to that, we will update you. All about the emails, always the emails. Um, how can I find out if my college credits transfer to U Chicago from high school? That's Molly, that's a great question. Um, and tomorrow, feel free to jump in on this too. But as far as that, I believe they have to go through the process of being posted. Um, to your account. So I'm not exactly sure on the timeline from when you submit them to when you would be able to see them. Um, and, you know, someone else can feel free to jump in. But um, I know the hope is too that, you know, eventually they would appear on that transcript that you can access through my planner and through my planner as well in general so that you can kind of work through once you have them um, planning out which requirements you still need. Um, as far as your degree plan. Um, but again, tomorrow, feel free to jump in. Yeah, um, I will jump in here briefly because this has been a little bit of a moving target for some people. So it depends what kind of credit you're talking about. Um, if you took college courses in high school that counted towards your high school degree, they will not count at UChicago. We do not accept pre-matriculation credit as part of your degree program. Um, so do keep that in mind. If you're a transfer student, it's a totally different ball game. Talk to your advisor. Um, you're likely um, already in conversation with or about to be in conversation with one of our assistant deans who will help you with the transfer credit process. Um, but pre-matriculation credit, so credit that you, college credit that you took before you arrived at UChicago will not count towards your UChicago degree. All right, looks like we have time for just a couple more. Um, one of them is, if I've already taken the AP chemi chemistry exam, do I need to take the chemistry placement exam? Yes. yes. <laughs> Please do take the chemistry placement exam. Um, it is, again, more specific to UChicago, UChicago's Gen Ken curriculum. There's likely to be a lot of overlap, but it will give the chemistry department more information than just an AP score would. Great. Uh, is registration for specific courses time sensitive slash first come first serve? Hope, do you want me to take this or do you want it? You got it. You look like you're okay. ready. <laughs> um, the way we've done pre-registration in the past it is, is it is not time sensitive. It is a ranked bidding system. Um, there are a few things up in the air about course registration for autumn. So stay tuned for that. There will be some differences from what we've done in the past. There's been some differences every year from what we've done in the past as we take, tweak the um, system and what works best for people. But it is not time sensitive in the past. It has been a window in which you get to log on and rank the classes you want. All right, these are going quick. So I'll just throw out a couple more if you guys are hanging in there okay. Um, what is covered on the math higher level exam? Hope's looking at me like she wants me to answer this one. <laughs> so the, the math placement exam is largely pre-calculus and calculus. Um, and then everything beyond calculus is what's covered on the higher level exam. And basically, if you are invited to that exam, you sort of take that exam and you stop when you stop knowing things. It covers, um, Proofs, linear algebra, and I believe gets into analysis. Awesome. Sounds terrifying. Um, will, uh, with the current quarantine and social distancing orders, will classes be smaller than normal and more competitive to get into? And I don't know how much information you have, but. 
Yes, I feel like that information is constantly evolving. Um, we get email updates about that all the time because obviously UChicago is following the CDC guidelines and recommendations um, and doing everything that they can to ensure that once students do come back to campus and you know staff that we're following the appropriate guidelines like social distancing and limiting social interactions and class sizes. Um, as far as them being more competitive to get into, I feel like we wouldn't really make, the UChicago wouldn't make that a disadvantage to you of not being able to get to, into the class physically, but I know that they're preparing, you know, kind of like we did this quarter as far as giving alternative options such as um, online classes, um, ways to access it um, beyond just being in the classroom. Um, so regardless, I feel like you were, the class that you want to get into, you'll still have the same chance of getting in, but it, it could be that the class is is different. So, it, you know, whether you're there physically or if you are in an online format, um, I, I still know that they're doing everything they can do to ensure that you're still able to get into the classes that you need to complete your degree, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Uh... Let's do just one more, if that sounds good. Um, so someone noticed that some courses on the list offered by the department, so I'm guessing on the department website, um, do not appear in the course catalog. Um, so wondering if they're still available, which one is kind of the definitive way to go or thing to look at. Oh, somebody has done their research. I'm very impressed. Uh, the course catalog, a little bit of the inside baseball, is published once a year in April. So that is the compendium of everything we know about classes offered for the following year at that time, which is not to say that departments can't change their minds throughout the year, and that does happen. So um, there are certain classes that are offered once. They may be listed on the department website because they were offered, I don't know, in spring 2018. Maybe it was a visiting professor and it's not going to be offered again. So there's that situation. There's always um, classes that have been added since the catalog was published. So there's not necessarily one definitive answer for that. Um, usually what happens, what is published in the course catalog is what happens throughout the year, but not 100% of the time. So do be a little bit flexible when you're planning things out. Um, I will say that we do our best to get the catalog as accurate as possible. Um, as far in advance as we do publish it. Um, and then ev before the start of every quarter, um, there we publish the actual schedule in what's called class search. So that will be the definitive compendium of what's going to be offered in the next quarter. So once you see something published in class search, it's more than likely to be offered. Amazing. Um, I know that the other academic advisors have been answering a lot of the questions as we've been going through there. So um, I'll leave it if they have time to answer these last three that are in our Q&A, um, just because we're just about out of time. Um, but Tamara, Hope, Janine, Debbie, Alex, thank you so much for being a part of this, for uh, giving, giving us and all the students your time today. Um, I think this has been really informative. I've learned a lot, certainly. Um, if anyone who's on this chat questions, again, like the um, advisor said, you should have your assignment by early next week, if not sooner. Um, so reach out to your advisor. If you have questions in the meantime, you can always email collegeadvising, one word, at uchicago.edu. Um, and next week we will be having an academic resources webinar. So hopefully we'll see you then. The registration page is on the, the college website. So um, yeah, thank you so much for joining. Thank you all academic advisors and uh, we'll see you all soon.